go. Okay, my name is Laura Cameron. I'm from Moultrie, Georgia, which is very south Georgia, about an hour away from Tallahassee. Yep. Um, my project is called Chlorella as an Alternative Fuel, and this is a continuation. Last year, I um, made biodiesel from soy, which is the most conventional feedstock, and compared its physical properties to the physical properties of petroleum diesel. This year, I wanted to experiment with something that's not a feed, that's not um, a food source, and has higher oil yields and higher growth rates than soy or corn because it um it, you can't you viably use soy to produce enough fuel for the entire world to uh, consume because the energy demand is too high. So I um I first I hypothesized that I could create biofuel from uh, or biodiesel from um, the lipids from algae. And secondly I um, wanted to do something with the biomass, so I discovered, after doing some research, I found a process called, called pyrolysis, and it basically the breakdown of any organic material without the presence of oxygen, and what this does is it actually creates a flammable wood gas, and it creates um, a substance similar to crude oil that can actually be further processed to make conventional petroleum products. And um, I, uh, first I had to culture my algae, and uh, I did this, it's very simple, I'd use um, two 20-gallon tanks and a 10-gallon fish tank, and I um, used fish fertilizer to add plenty of nitrates and phosphates. Um, I grew this for a period of about five months, gave me roughly 500 milliliters by volume of dry biomass. Um, to harvest the algae, this right here is actually mostly water. To put it in perspective, this right here will yield about this much algae by dry biomass. So I had to find a more efficient way of just simply um, removing the, try to remove the water. So I use a process called flocculation, which is the uh, same process used in um, sewage treatment plants. Basically, you add a flocculant. I put the CVS and bought something called alum, which is a flocculant. What it does is it separates it by mass, and basically, it'll, there'll be a layer of algae down at the bottom and a layer of water at the top. And I put it in this apparatus that I made myself. And the algae is set up to the bottom and it'll pull the clip away and it'll drain the algae in a higher concentration with some water. And then I'll put it in a drying oven and I'll refine and remove the rest of the water and that's how you get the dry biomass. And to get remove the oil from the, um, the dry biomass, I just made I made a hydraulic press. I mean I made a homemade piston and I used a hydraulic press to uh, remove squeeze the oil out of the algae. And what basically you get is you actually have to add a little bit of water to it, but you have to uh, press it under 5,000 psi and this ruptures the algae cells and you get this solution here, the suspension, you get oil on the top and you get a, uh, a layer of water and some particles of algae and then I use a centrifuge to separate the algae from the water and the um, excess contaminants and there are other ways to actually remove the oil from algae like using something called hexene but see the problem with hexene is that you can also remove the oil, the oil that you have is impure and it can mess up the transesterification process. So I decided to just use um, pressing to get the most pure oil I possibly could. How long did it take you to start to finish? Start to finish, it took me roughly five months to grow the algae plus two more weeks to make the biodiesel and to extract everything, get the biodiesel. And then it took me roughly three weeks to do all the testing, and it took me another week to do the pyrolysis. Okay, cool. So, roughly seven-ish months. Seven-ish months, cool.